Welcome everybody to Mission Fishing Live podcast. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm your host, Buto. Hopefully you guys are ready to get your black belt in fishing. What's going on? We got Peter86. Welcome back. Good to see you. Doug Rubin El Sueño. What's going on? Benji Moreno. Good evening. Submission Fishing Co. Oos. Oos. Oos back to you, man. Pohukai. Glad you can join us. Good to see you back. Graham, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Fishing reps. Kevin, what's going on? Leonard. Welcome back, man. Andres. Welcome back to the show. Glad you could join us. Hopefully you guys had a good week. We got a Veterans Day tomorrow. So any of the veterans out here, shout out to you. I know Cal, I think he, I, he was fishing for lobster or something like that. So I don't think he's going to be on tonight. But uh, Dave Rage is another one. So if you guys see him, definitely give them a shout out for Veterans Day tomorrow. Maybe you guys got the day off. I know we don't. We're working 24-7. Let's see here. we got a good show for you guys tonight. Basically, we're going to talk about um, kind of the transition, you know, from summer fishing, fall fishing, and then into winter fishing. You know, a lot of the change that we go through is, honestly, our summer kind of goes into fall here in San Diego or Southern California, like the the summer fishing once it comes on it it doesn't just end at summer and then fall switches like it lately at least the last couple of years it's gone from summer and then it stays into fall it stays pretty good but then that fall drop off fall to winter becomes a whole nother story right i mean it's like totally different fishing a lot of the stuff we were fishing for leaves so we're just going to go over that you know do some tips kind of what you can still fish for deadlines we got to meet um all that good stuff so a little bit of theory on like um catching different fish in different temperatures and all that. So I think it'll be good. Got some Instagram questions, some questions from you guys, all that good stuff. So I think it'll be good, you know, good show without a guest for once. Right. It was like the last three times we've had guests. So, uh, which has been good. I, I like trying to mix it up. So hopefully you guys like the guests we have been having, but we're doing it solo today. Old style, old school fishing. Alexis Rodriguez, Oos, welcome to the show. Captain Dan, Oos, Carlsbad checking in. Captain Carlsbad reporting in. Stephen Mendoza, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Good stuff. Let's see, in the news, uh, nothing I've seen fishing-wise. Like I said, we're starting to wind down. Uh, no monster catches or anything like that. One thing I did want to announce is CCA is having... Um, a drive in December at Santee at the BNS um, brewery. And what they're going to do is mostly it's like a toy drive and food drive uh, for veterans. It's December 10th. And so I'm going to be there. I'll have a booth there. If you guys want to check that out. Um, I know CCA podcast will be there. Doc talk podcast will be there as well. Uh, so I think it'll be a good time. We'll get you some more details as that comes up, but generally they ask for bring an unwrapped toy or some canned goods. And again, on the heels of veterans day that that's coming up so <laughs> bring something there and then like i said i'll, I'll be there too uh, with a little setup probably selling some jigs if you guys do bring something uh i'll do a sale you know where do a sale or something like that G give you guys a good deal on some jigs um yeah so that'll be fun so if you guys want to come hang out come say hi um love to have you so december 10th get ready for that the uh cca food drive for veterans Foods and food and toys. We'll we'll have more details as it comes up. But that was kind of um just happened today, make it official. Worked out some of the details and they asked if I wanted to come in. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. So let's do it. Hopefully I see you guys down there. And even, you know, more than anything, it's about bringing um the gifts and the food, right? That's that's first and foremost. So help out if you can. I know stuff's tough right now, right? For everybody, but there's always somebody worse off than we are. That's for sure. So just that little bit helps. I really appreciate it. Iron Fish, Oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Yeah, Captain Dan, see what the CCA event in December. I know you'll be there. I think it'll be fun. We don't do too many events like that, but it, but it's good when they come up for sure. It's nice when the fishing community goes out there and makes a difference. At least I think it does. Everybody's got to improve a little bit, right? Let's see. I think that's all I had as far as um, 
news wise, as far as the announcement goes, no dead uh, great white sharks or anything like that this time around. Let's see here. I wonder if we should do Instagram questions. Maybe we'll do those. We'll do some of them now because some of them kind of they correlate into um, what you guys are saying. If you guys got any questions, obviously let me know too. Iron Fish, you'll be there. Awesome, dude. You're always there. Sorry if I missed it. Where was the event at? Um, it's the BNS. It's a brewery in Santee uh, down in San Diego. So it's what East County, San Diego, I believe. It'll be fun. And it's it's going to be like a mini event. There's going to be like booths and stuff. So I'll, I'll have like an actual booth there. Um, and I know other lure companies and stuff will be there too. So it's not just like the toys. It's a little event. Like it's a good thing. I'm pretty sure they're going to do a podcast from there and stuff like that. So just another little fishing get together. Yeah, this would be cool. If you guys want to want to cruise by. Let's see here. Some of these questions bled into it, and some of them didn't. Let's see. Oh, Thermodynamics 1904 responded to my question. He wanted fishing reports. Yeah, there's not too much going on, you know, in the fishing, but I mean, we can do a quick report. Usually what I do, I'll just do a quick scan um, of some of, like, the dock totals and stuff like that. But, yeah, why don't we check that out? See what we can find here. I mean, San Diego dock totals, Ventura. Um, pretty much everybody's got the same story. Like Long Beach, they one boat, uh, so they only have rockfish. So something you have to understand too is this time of year, uh, a lot of these boats they go in for repairs and updates and stuff like that. So a lot of boats already had their last trips, but that's not to say that there's not fish out there or even pelagics and stuff like that. But a lot of them kind of get this cutoff date. Um, these deckhands have had long days too, long days, long weeks, long seasons. So a lot of times the boats just shut them down. They go and get the repairs, get them painted, dry dock them, whatever they want to do, change the upholstery. It, this is the time they see it. So you're seeing a lot less boats run. I mean, you're seeing almost one boat out of kind of every landing go. Um, kind of more our area, like Dana Wharf. They only have one boat. It's same story, rockfish, 80 rockfish, four whitefish, two sculpin. For eight anglers, though, that, that that's pretty good. Um, Davies Locker. This one's at a Newport, so that was a full day. 22 anglers, so they had 146 Bonito, 37 walk, Rockfish, 17. And I know the uh, that's probably the Freelance, if I am had to guess. Yeah, it's a Freelance full day. So they go to the islands for sure. So they're going to the Catalina Islands. Freelance is still running. But, I mean, 146 Bonito, 22 anglers. That's not bad. Oceanside Sea Center, they had seven guys, 70 rockfish, so they limited out. C4 uh, Sport Fishing, they had two boats. Let's see who went out there. The Elgato, Elgato Dos and Sea Watch, two anglers and then 31 anglers. Oh, they had an AM and a PM. Yeah, well, mostly rockfish is pretty much the story. You know, Fisherman's Landing only had one boat, 14 anglers, 41 rockfish. <clears throat> What's interesting is the rockfish seems to be pretty good right now and i think because the pelagic fishing was so good this year with like everybody was going after the dorado and the yellow fin and blue fin and stuff everybody kind of pumped the brakes on the rockfish it seemed like so it's probably pretty good i think it's got a nice good rest um but they're gonna get the beat down pretty soon here when there's nothing else to fish um aside from that yeah you can look at temp break too if i was gonna go there are still fish out there guys it's not like it, it's all dried up Based on the temp break, let's see here. So the temp, the dark red is still only like 70 degrees, so it's a lot cooler. But if I was going to launch, say, at an ocean side, I'm down here in Carlsbad, I'd definitely go to the 209 right here in this spot because there's a ridge right here too. 277, all the Dorado and a lot of yellowfin were like right in this zone this year. This was the hot spot. And even right here at the um the 267 was like a great spot. A lot of times I was launching from Dana Point and I'd hit this zone. 
and I actually found a lot of Dorado here. And then if it, this wasn't any good, I'd go out like this way and kind of like make this triangle. But that's pretty good. Still some good water down here too. You know, the 178, 182. But it's a little harder to judge the private boats, you know, because you don't get the fishing report. Unless you're like really checking out the forums and stuff like that. Or you got friends that are out there fishing. But um, there's still people catching yellowfin for sure. Uh, one or two Dorado, but the tuna are still there. Bluefin are still here too. So don't don't sleep on that. The bluefin have been here notoriously year round, even though the boats aren't running. But a lot of times they move back here into like, um, yeah, Tanner, and then even the front and back of um, San Clemente, you can still get them. So if you're on a private boat, uh, you can definitely go out there. Party boats have kind of switched to rock fishing, but I mean, there's still fish. Still San Diego. I mean, you, you can't complain. Even not even San Diego, but North County, uh, and even the islands seem to be pretty good. San Nicholas rockfish will be popping. They're still biting, so it's still good. Just not the not the summer bite. And we're gonna talk about that stuff for sure. Let's see here. The sound isn't synced with the video, but maybe it's just my phone. It's a little bit off. Yeah, it might be a little bit off, but I think we might just have to go with it. Benjamin Moreto, Matt Wachovi Art will be there as well. Yeah. So he'll he'll be at the um if you guys are wondering, Benji is talking about the CCA drive. Benji will be there, I know. Joviard will be there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, so I mean, that's... I don't have really an in-depth fishing report, but rockfish seems to be what everybody's going for. Uh, let's see if I had any other questions here slow pitch rods g martinez bjj responded slow pitch rods and jigging off the beach uh slow pitch rods it's any i i think they're all pretty good to be honest with you uh the pen makes a good one um phoenix you know make, makes a decent slow pitch rod Daiwa makes a whole bunch um really waiting for that taipan rod if you guys watch the show the show that I did last week, I had uh, Simon on from Taipan Rods. He's a manufacturer here in America, and he's working on a slow pitch blank. So I'm kind of waiting on those to like see how they look. And hopefully that can be kind of my main my main rod to go to. But um, you just want to match it to the jig size. Um, if you're talking about shore fishing, because I know you, you asked from shore, really you want like a casting rod. The traditional slow pitch rods, they don't really work because they're too uh, parabolic. They're mainly made for vertical fishing, which you can get a uh, specific rods. A lot of times they're like Japanese models like that, or um, I know like the major craft rod, for example, they've got one that's like just for shore casting. I think Daiwa has got one too. Um, and they're pretty good because what you want to do when you're pitching from the shore, you send it out and it really, it's the same technique is that you're lifting and letting it flutter. You're doing the pitch the whole way. But you'd still, you've still you got to have a nice rod. I think a lighter rod is better. Don't get something that's super stiff because you still want that. You still want it to whip the jig up. As you're pulling back, you want it to flick that jig as you go by. Um, I've been using like a long fall rod, like the Phoenix long fall, if I'm throwing like a 40 or 60 gram. But if I want those 20 grams, just like a um, a pretty light, pretty light rod. Um, I don't like the Phoenix M1 inshore, like the, the lightest one. Um, but yeah, I know I gotta get some of like those Taipan trout rods would probably work pretty good too. Something lighter that, that actually is flicking, flicking the jig. You want it almost like it's like too light. You know, if that makes sense, like you don't want stiff, you don't want this big backbone in it. You don't want, you're not fishing stick baits or crank baits or anything like that. You want to have that nice whip to it. But yeah, man, just send it out wherever close to structure if you can or the grass line and, um, yeah, just hammer them. I know some of these guys do really good out there shore fishing. I know Aaron Kruger, sometimes he's on the show. He does pretty good. I've gone out there and catch fish too. Just up and down, man. Same motion. Lift and fall, lift and fall. And they'll definitely come get it on the way down. Matt Lahini, sport fishing. What's going on? Captain Bill in the house. He took us out on submission at sea. Had a good trip. Glad to see you in here. Captain... Uh, Captain, you got your is your boat in dry dock, or what are you, are you still fishing out there, or what do you do in the off season? I'm curious how that runs. Arnie, what's going on? 
How's it going, man? Glad to see you here. Arnie, you feeling better? Give you a shout out. Captain Dan said you weren't feeling well, but he said you're turning the corner. So glad you're here. Good to see you. Arnie's like the uh, the unofficial cameraman of the MMFC. Kiwi reacts. Ooh, so welcome to the show. What's going on, dude? Three more trips this season. Nice. It's only a few more. Yeah, like I said, I was telling everybody how it kind of winds down, you know, when the season season starts to come down. With that being said, when we talk about seasons, I don't know if you're like me, people like us. I know a lot of you guys in this chat. Um, we don't really have seasons because, um, like, we fish year round. I fish year round. I don't care. Like, I, I don't ever stop fishing. I fish all through the summer, all through the winter, through the fall, through the spring. It doesn't matter. If it's a weekend or in the week, at least I try to get out like once a week. It's been a couple of weeks since I've gotten out there, uh, which isn't usual for me, but I'm definitely going to try to get out there. Um, hopefully this weekend or definitely next week. I need some content too, man. Now that YouTube has been slacking, but you know, we, we fish year round. So, you know, if you're just a sport boat guy, you know, your season's kind of winding down and then you kind of wait till the summer that happens a lot. But I know a lot of you guys too in the chat, you're like me and you're like a lot of these guys in here where it's, it don't matter, man. We, we fish rain or shine. Well, maybe not rain night or day. I don't really fish night either, but during the, during the day all year, we're out there fishing TV metal art. Oos. Hey man, better late than never. Glad you could join us. We run out of people before we run out of surface game. Oh, interesting. That's good insight, actually. That makes sense, though. Yeah, if people start to, you know, a lot of people they watch the, um, and you know this, they watch the doc totals. You know, like I was just looking at it, and it's like, if you see, oh, nobody's out there catching, people just don't book the trips and stuff. That's interesting, though. But they're still there for sure. Let's see. So yeah, let's talk about a little bit about the transition. So we go from summer right and we have the pelagics um, when i say pelagics i'm usually talking the target species that we're going for are uh, the yellowfin tuna the dorado bluefin we'll talk about them a little bit they, they tend to stick around all year but typically the dorado and the yellowfin um, and even some of the yellowtail like the patty yellowtail yellowtail are another one that um, we'll go to a little bit in the winter but they're not as finicky the dorado and yellowfin they usually just leave when it gets too cold um the Benito don't stick around. Sometimes the skipjack. They didn't really come in this year, but we do get those. Um, and we all we all know that game, right? You get on a sport boat, you go slam, or you go out on a private boat. You go out there and get it. That that's a lot of people like that super intense fishing. Um, it's kind of all or nothing. It's it's a breaker bust. It, it's it, it's fun fishing, but that's kind of where like the summer warriors and weekend warriors come in, you know, but like I was saying, people like us, we fish. But if you're new to fishing, you would think, well, what am I going to fish for? Maybe you got into it this summer and you're like, well, now, now what the hell do I do? And there's still, there's still plenty of fish. You know, some things you've got to realize is the pelagics leave um, with some exception, but they chase the bait. You know, it's not a matter of like, they don't just stick around, they eat different food. So when the water cools and the water changes, the bait leaves, that's typically when the fish leave, you know, you know, they're just, they're looking to eat. Um, the bait follows, you know, so you're not really following the pelagic so much like the Dorado, what you're actually following is the bait. So if you're really smart about it, you understand that you need to follow where the bait is going and then you'll actually find the fish. It's not like the fish are one area and then the baits in an area. The, the bait is really the key. That's why we always talk about um, where you find like the diving birds and stuff like that. So that's the key. When the bait starts disappearing, um, the pelagics start to disappear. And the bait is, it's a lot more fickle. Like the pelagics can regulate their body temperature a little more because they're bigger, but the bait can't. So it, it has to follow like this stream and then they go down and, and they disappear because they just, they can't deal with that shift in the, the water column and the water change as much. And pelagics just follow. And so that's just how it goes. So once they leave, but we do have some fish you know, that stick around. Um, most notably what we talked about is the rockfish and rockfish. They don't go anywhere. I mean, they, they migrate, uh, they migrate partially, like maybe from rock to rock, but they don't like, they don't go from, 
down to South America and then move up and then go up to like uh, Alaska or anything like that. They're kind of scattered all throughout, but they have homes. They, they stay where the rocks are. They kind of stay in generalized areas. They move from place to place, but they don't, they don't have big migratory patterns. Um, you know, and they eat a lot of the colder water stuff. They'll eat squid. Um, they eat each other, other bait fish, eat, you know, stuff like that. And then the halibut will stick around. They come and spawn to the shore. Um, which is a good one. So we'll, we'll stick with the rockfish for a minute. Um, the rockfish, we only have really two more months to fish those things. So as we transition, a lot of these boats are going for the rockfish right now. But once January 1st comes, we won't be able to fish the rockfish anymore. But not only that, we're going to get the regulations have changed next year. And I don't know if we have clarification on that. Or maybe you have to text Wayne or something. They were only going to open a maximum of five months of fishing of the rockfish next year. So now is the time to really get some rockfish if you guys want to go out because it's going to close uh, the 31st of December. And then I don't know how long it's going to be closed. Traditionally, it was closed till March. So we, we'd had the three, three months like cooling off period before we can fish for them. But I think it's going to be longer this year. So if you want to get on rockfish, now's the time. Um, like I said, they don't leave. They're always there. And they're probably going to be hungry because in, in the same fashion, the bait changes as well. So once the bait leaves, they've been eating their asses off all summer. Well, they eat a lot of the same stuff, except they stick around. So I think the, it's easier to get bit on the big rock fish during the winter bite because just there's less bait. There's more competition for food and stuff like that. And that's why you're seeing these boats post pretty good numbers. That, like I talked about earlier, is that we had the, um, everybody was so busy chasing the Dorado and stuff this year. Not meant that they didn't really stick with the rockfish. Even the boats that like um, the traditional boats that would fish like the three quarter and half day boats, a lot of them were going out and looking for Dorado too, because they were so close. Uh, I know at Oceanside and uh, like Dana Point, uh, a lot of those boats traditionally are just like rockfish boats. They fish the barn kelp, uh, San Onofre and stuff like that, looking for rockfish. But even those boats, man, they were limiting on dorado just like all freaking year so not all year but a lot of the year so they were close enough to get out there so even like half day boats were fishing pelagics man it was crazy which is okay because it gave gave those rockfish a break i think so i think that's one of the main early winter fish that, that you're going to catch but we have a limited time on those guys and it's going to get less so we've got the rockfish obviously um that was one of the questions too and doug rubin asked this was another Instagram question. See if I can find it. I think it was just rockfish. You want to know rockfish setups? Yeah, Doug Rubin. El Sueño in the house. He was asking about rockfish setups. Um, you know me. I'm a jigging guy. The 130. Slow death. If you're going um, anywhere deep, I make a 220 version. I, I just fish the slow pitch jigs. You guys seen some of my videos, man. I've you pull in absolute tanks with those link cods. You can catch link cods stick around too. And if you're going deep, so this year one of the things that they're changing in the winter is that they're going to open up deeper zones. So traditionally, and only in the last couple of years, I think two years, we've been able to fish 100 fathoms, which is 600 feet. Prior to that, I think. It was only a couple hundred feet you can fish. Well, now they're going to close some zones, but then they're going to op open up for like some of the cod. Um, we'll be able to fish like, I, I think like almost about 600 feet or more, a thousand feet. They're going to open a lot of deeper areas for some of the bottom fish, which is pretty exciting. And then we're going to get an opportunity for that because that hasn't been open to us in a long time. Um, so even though they're closing one door on the rock fish, they're opening another for deeper zones for different kind of fish. And when that's the case, you guys got to go with your big boys. We make these in like a 400 to 600. You guys don't sleep on a 600 gram jig. Uh, this one is just a 400, but you need something that's going to get down to the bottom. And that's the hardest part when you fish deep is even if you're going to fish live bait, you need like straight up like 16 ounce, 24 ounce like sinker. And it's no joke uh, to get down to the bottom when you're, when you're talking past 600 feet. Electric reel might not be a bad idea. I don't own one, but uh, for 
rockfish setups, I, I go all jigs, man. Slow pitch jigs all day. I just hit them on the bottom, wait till I hit the bottom, and then just pump it. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to reel it up. If I do, I'll maybe reel it up five times with the pump, send it back down, and, and you'll get bit for sure. Uh, lean cod, eat them. Uh, the big red, the vermilion, uh, Boccaccio, the salmon grouper love those things. So it, it's pretty fun. If that's not your jam, you know, live bait, I just use the double dropper loop. Yeah, with a heavy weight. That's my go-to for rock fishing on the bottom if I'm using like cut bait or something. What I like to do is just send the weight and just like, once I hit the bottom, I just like to, I don't lay it there. I like to just kiss it. So like as the boat's going and you're just feeling it kind of tap on the bottom. I don't know why, but that's just like, that's the sweet spot, man. It it's just get bit like crazy off of that. Like when you feel it, you and I want the tip of my rod to just, kind of just barely kissed kiss the bottom with that weight and I get, you get pretty good results with that but if you guys have not slow pitch rockfish dude you guys are i i'm i i'm convinced rock slow pitching for rockfish is better <laughs> i think than like cut bait if you guys seen some of my like the youtube videos or ask some of these guys that have tried it it's like it's freaking insane some of the fish you guys can catch i mean just in la jolla i've pulled out absolute giant fish it's crazy I don't know if the bigger fish are just like attracted to it or what it is, but you get pretty good results. So there are bluefin tuna and dorado around. Yeah, the water is definitely cooling off. Water temp dropped five to seven degrees uh, with this weather and pattern that just passed. We'll see. Yeah. I know it got kind of slowed down. People were saying a lot of people like talk about the full moon having an issue with that. I don't like I said, the soul lunar, I'm not too hip on, but that seems to be a pretty general consensus. But yeah, I've heard of people still getting and you can still see stuff on like instagram too the bluefin the bluefin are around so that that's one of the things in the winter too guys the bluefin they're still there you have to go get on if you don't want to catch just the rockfish and you're still looking for that big bite the bluefin are still out there and that's again where you're going to need the 600 gram jigs i mean that's been the money for these things for the past couple of years is heavy jigs uh, and just get them down there in the zone. But the bluefin typically have been sticking around. You're going to have to go on like a two, two day or more plus um, to get them. And they're usually hogs. I mean, the ones that stick around are like 150 pounders to 300 pounders. The, the big bluefin still stick around. So historically, historically, like last couple of years, the bluefin are still here. So you do have an opportunity to get those little far out of reach for for the private boats just because it's like too far unless you know you kind of kind of have to camp out go past the islands and then look for them for like a couple days or, or at least just get out past the point i missed the dorado run man you missed it all it's a shame dude hopefully next year yeah dude the dorado fishing was freaking it was epic this year it was insane like I, i've never seen anything like it i know some of you guys can attest to that Tyler, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. 16 lings along with limits of cod for 18 anglers last Saturday. 16 lings, that's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah, limits of cod. Yeah, man, bottom fishing where it's at right now, for sure. If the fish have food, good water, right temps, they'll hang around. Missing these, they'll move. Yep, that's true. In Florida, any snorkeling operations in Key Lago? Key Largo. Um, I'm not sure. Who's going fishing this weekend? I know you are, Doug. Your wife don't fish. You got to get her on a boat, man. You heard you? Oh, what with the uh, the flagics or what we were having? Because you, what you moved to Texas? Is that right? <sighs> Big cod sounds tasty right now. Heck yeah. Slow pitch jig is money. Black cod in 2,000 feet. Man, I'm here for it. I, I think electric reel is going to have to be the way to go, though. I don't know if you guys have ever reeled up. Like, reeling up 600 feet is just like, it's a tragedy, man. <laughs> you can only do it a few times. Um, and, and you start to feel it. I think so. If, if we're fishing 1,000 feet plus, I don't know how you, how you do it without an electric reel. You're going to have to. You know, we went on that trip um, when you invited me on your trip and we went out to uh, San Nicolas Islands 
and we were fishing like four, 600 feet. If you remember, and a lot of people, and I, I got some huge, everybody got some huge fish. We were catching those big rock fish, but I mean, I fished it all day, but it, it was rough. And a couple guys had the electric reels and some people were like clowning on them. Dude, but like halfway through the trip, everyone was like, dude, these guys, they did it right. <laughs> they did it right. So if, if that's going to be, a, I'm going to have to look into that and invest in one of those. That's definitely going to be a thing. If you're serious about doing that, that black cod fishing. I don't know how you're going to do it by hand. You'd be a savage. That's like Florida fishing, man. A lot of those guys got those electric reels because they fish like those reefs. Same thing, like 1,000, 2,000 feet deep for like tile fish and stuff like that. It's crazy. Yeah, man. I'm here for it. Let's do it. Speaking of sand, oh, I heard a little bit of squid bite off of sand. Oh, Kevin, is it common for the white sea bass to be around this late? That's awesome. That's some insider information right there. Yeah, the squid, I they were like, the squid came when it was colder beginning of this year too and last year. It's definitely, I, I think, a thing. 16 to 32 ounce and lots of line, yeah. I'm looking forward to it this year. 100 fathoms only. Yeah, man. Crazy. Could be some sore arms. Yeah. I, I don't, the white sea bass, I don't think they don't move really. They, they kind of stick in the islands. Um, yeah. So that's another thing. And I want to talk about when I said there was some exceptions. So when we get in the winter fishing, we talk about like the patty yellowtail, right? So the patty yellowtail, you find those little guys that they live in the patties, but if you guys watch the um, the yellowtail special I had when Kevin was on here, fishing reps, the big ones stick around. So when they grow up and they turn into adults, um, one of the terms you're hearing about is like the home guards, um, like the big, they guard home, like just these big old fatties, like 30, 40 pounds. The yellowtails stick around and they stay in, in the islands and the kelp. So when they grow up, they actually live um closer in shore and they don't really become like the offshore pelagics anymore and it's interesting about their species when they're small and juveniles they stay out deep they go under patties and they school a lot and they they just live offshore and when it comes to when they get bigger and they're the big adults they run and they still run in schools but they're not as large but yeah uh, coronado islands uh, la jolla uh, even catalina gets them so that's another fish that um we kind of associate with like summer fishing, but the yellowtails stick around and they're here all year. So, and as the ones grow too. So when they grow up, especially like those older juveniles that are kind of like two years older and like their second season, now they're starting to like come in and make their home into uh, the kelp beds and stuff like that. So the yellowtail bite's still there. Don't, definitely don't sleep on that. And one of the good things too, that you guys got to think of is, uh, for these yellowtails, like a lot of the pressure comes off because people just don't, they don't fish in the winter as much. You know, you go out to La Jolla during the summer and it's like, there's 50,000 kayakers, there's freaking boats everywhere. And as it gets later and later, I mean, you go out there, maybe you see like three kayakers, just a couple boats. So you do have that advantage of definitely uh, being able to fish, fish with a lot less, less pressure. So that's another one of those like, Bluefin kind of stick around, but the yellowtail do too. Yeah, white sea bass. They were another one that just, they don't really leave. So La Jolla, that, that's on my list here too. La Jolla is actually, um, it's a good place to fish in the winter. You know, as long as the kelp, sometimes the kelp kind of recedes a little bit or it gets too cold. But lately, it seems it seems to be okay. I think it's to my understanding is usually the heat is bad for the kelp. I think when the water gets too hot. So uh, the kelp does pretty well. And kelp fishing is good. It's got its own ecosystem. As you can see, the story is you just kind of go closer to shore. You're leaving, leaving the offshore stuff and kind of coming closer to, to the shore and islands. It's, uh, let's see here. Have I tried any of the new pen fathoms? Uh, no, I've just got the pen. The pen fathom um, low profiles I've been using. But I've seen, are you talking like the new spinning reels? Those things look pretty sick, but no, I haven't tried any of the new, new ones. Arnie, it's way too much crazy. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
one drop is like probably all you're gonna get. Yeah, Coach Warp says winter is big fish time. That's right, because the little fish they can't hang, man, and the big fish stick around. You're absolutely right. Uh, Jesse Oos, welcome to the show. Yep. Oh no, the new gray two speeds. No, I haven't. I know what you're talking about. It's just like the Fathom Black, right? But a little different. I did see those. I haven't tried one yet, though. No. Yeah, so definitely, definitely La Jolla. Um, let's see. And then, obviously, what everybody knows, especially in this group, Eric the Judge Lehman, he's not even in the chat. Bay fishing, and that's where we all go back to. Um, the cool thing about bay fishing is that even even the pelagics slow down, right? They leave. Say you don't want to fish La Jolla or you're looking for rockfish. Well, then rockfish stops. So we're going to lose rockfish in December for who knows how long. Well, now where do you go? Well, you still got the bay. You still got the calicos and stuff in, like I said, in La Jolla, there still is that bite. But even that rockfish um, game is going to shut off. Um, but the bays, the bays will always be there, man. And that's where you know, stock up in your 20 grams and stuff like that. We're going to get uh, spotted bay bass, sparred sand bass. They, they all stick around, man. Even the halibut, uh, all, all that bay stuff is really the way to go. And then that that's going to change it. But they've been there all year. And I think a lot like this year, a lot of people left them alone. Um, but that's that's kind of like that, like that January to March where you, you start coming down to a point where you're like, hell, there ain't nothing else to fish. That's when you get on the kayak, uh, start to get after them. Because one thing you've, you got to understand is that the when the temperature goes down and a lot of these, like a lot of these coaches stand like the big fish, uh, stick around and eat. And then even some of like the bay fish. So when you're fishing the bays, that changes too, even from summer and winter. Uh, fish, they're cold-blooded animals. So one thing that you have to contend with is or one thing they have to contend with is the conditions of the water. I think there's only, I don't know. I think the Opa is like the only known like warm blooded fish. Uh, so when they're cold blooded fish, it's like the reptiles. They can only when reptiles, they disappear during the winter, right? They go in, they almost go into like, like a hibernation or like a stasis state. Uh, fish are similar too, is that if, if when the water gets cold and it starts to cool down, uh, they don't have an internal body source or internal heat source for their body. And then, so we're going into like some bay fishing tips now too. And, and this is where it kind of relates is you have to understand that when they can't move and they can't adjust and their body's cold, a lot of times during the bays is you want to go looking on the outskirts in the more shallow water because then it becomes warm. I know like um, South Bay is notorious. A lot of people go to South Bay. Um, is a big thing because the water's a lot more shallow when you're talking about San Diego Bay and they go south. You know, when the water is like 20 feet or less, and, and not only that, the tide doesn't shift as much down there. Like it, it just, there's not as much turnover or even on, on the outskirts. Uh, a lot of the fish go there just, just simply because it's warmer, at least for spotties. Um, that's definitely the case. You know, sometimes you can pick them up deep in the bay at like 50 feet. A lot of times they're going to move into the grass uh, or even the docks and stuff where, it's definitely warmer on the outside. Um, so that's something, something to definitely think about when you're fishing winter. And then it's and another thing is like, we got the, as I was writing notes, I was like, we got this whole new, you got this whole dynamic when you're fishing winter fish as to what, what the actual proper technique is. Like a lot of people say, cause they go to like finesse fishing. So I've heard both and I'm curious. I want to hear what you guys, uh, Robonoxis, welcome to the show. Is this saltwater, freshwater talk? Uh, primarily saltwater, but we, we're we in Southern California, but do welcome if you're, uh, oh, Greater Lakes, Michigan, dude, that's awesome. Welcome to the show. A lot of guys have fished that. I mean, we, we talk, we talk freshwater a little bit. I'm honestly not really a freshwater guy, but uh, a lot of these guys do. Uh, mostly saltwater uh, on the Pacific coast. Oh, walleye, salmon, trout, etc. Nice. Yeah, man, we're all for it. Yeah, lake trout. Kevin fishes lake trout. They're all into it, for sure. I know some of like the topics they probably intertwine, but yeah, 
Dude, I gotta be honest with you. I've got I've got no knowledge of the Great Lakes, man. But those are like I don't even know how you guys consider those things lake. I've only like I've flown over them, like going to Chicago and stuff like that. I've never been on them, but it's like I know we're getting sidetracked here, but dude, the Great Lakes are like they're huge. And I don't think people understand. Like, if you haven't seen them or been up there, like literally you fly over them and it's like all you can see is water. Like there's parts of it where that's how vast it is. It's almost like, like when you see on the water here, when you're flying over, it was crazy. Pretty astounding how big they are. I love to fish up there though, man. I mean, I'm down to fish anywhere. I got plenty of 20, 40 and 60 grams. Oops. Yeah. Welcome. Big surf perch and opal eye are just around the corner. Heck yeah, man. And the surf. Yeah, dude, big fish are here. West Coast got the big waves. Yeah, man. <laughs> we Sometimes we do. It's no joke. That's true. Even getting out of these jetties. I, although I don't think the jetties are as bad as Florida, but yeah, like we got one at Oceanside that's pretty sketch. But yeah, surf fishing, it can be rough sometimes, man, just because those waves are crazy. Fishing for those show run browns was fun as hell. Down in SD, Oos, welcome to the show. Hit the restart. Oh, man. You guys going to be here all night. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I was talking about like baits. So he, I think one of, one of the traditional things that we used to hear um, is finesse fishing, right? Like this was when I first started getting into saltwater fishing, everybody was like, oh, it's wintertime. It's finesse fishing. It's finesse fishing. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know what finesse fishing is, it's really like, drop shot slow typically smaller baits slower present like ned rigs um drop shots stuff like that and just like very small gentle finesse it, it speaks for itself worms that have a nice action it's something that the fish watches for a long time and you literally are like teasing and, and enticing the fish to come get it but then a lot of people also will say big baits are the key. Power fishing is the key because it's here here's the two the two, the two different uh, extremes to the to the argument is that we know that the metabolism has slowed because they don't they're not moving as much. The water is colder. They're cold water animals. They don't move as much. So on one. And I'm curious, I'm, I want your guys' opinion on this. I'm curious what you, what you guys think. There's one school of thought that finesse fishing is the way to go because they're not going to move, right? Like they're slow, they're lethargic, and you kind of tease them to get them. The second school of thought is you use a big bait or like an A-rig, like a school of bait, kind of power fish it because they're going to go after, for the same reasons that the fish is cold, it's lethargic, but they're going to go after the big fish because it's it's more of a meal it's a better uh like the risk reward is better for the bigger fish like so there's one train of thought that like they're not going to go for a small they're not going to waste their time with a small bait and they're just going to crush the big one because it's a bigger it's a bigger reward for they, they don't have all the energy and then the other one is the finesse fishing is like well they don't have the energy they're not going to move but you can entice them with a smaller bait and tease them and then they'll slowly come over and eat it um so it's interesting. There's like, there is, so you, there is no consensus even in the winter fishing. And uh, I know people that do both. The bottom line is both people are, I've seen success with both ends. Uh, so which begs the question, does it even matter? Or do you just go out and fish? I mean, what do you guys think? I use, you know, I do slow pitch jigging even through the winter and I have a ton of success with it. And because I, I use the reaction, right? Slow pitch jigging is a reaction bite. Slow pitch jigging was designed for pressured slow fishing. Like that's kind of its whole idea. And then there's the reaction bite, which is you're basically triggering the instinct in the fish's brain where it's just, it ha it eats it. it. It's a reactionary thing. It's a primal thing in their mind. When they see it, it kind of just snaps and they go for it. Um, where finesse fishing is like, they see it and you got to entice them to get it. So I just thought it was an interesting point of conversation, which you guys use. I think it all kind of works. So maybe there is no like one key thing but everybody kind of switches and has a different theory during the winter um i i slow pitch i don't care winter summer at all it all seems to work but 
I slow pitched the last two winters exclusively. It, it was still able to catch fish with it. So, I mean, I don't know. I, they still got to eat, right? But I know not as much just because it's cold. But I'm curious what you guys do. Are you more finesse fishermen during the winter? Like, do you? So that's what I want to ask. You guys tell me in the chat. Do you guys switch your whole fishing like technique up? Or do you fish how you've always fished? Or do you do you go finesse fishing or do you go big baits into power fishing for the winter? Or do you just keep it all the same? For me, I fish different areas. And maybe I change the bait size, but really the technique and style I use, I, I kind of keep the same. Curious what you guys do. <clears throat> Our waves are like washing machines, not much time between them. No 50 foot waves, but out of 29 foot has been a record. Dang. Yeah, I don't, we don't really get 50 footers out here. I mean, maybe on like off days, Hawaii for sure, but um, I guess depending where you are, but we get some big ones. It's typically not that big though. Peacock, peacock bass fishing and Kona on the 22 of November. Can't wait. Oh, dude, really? That's awesome. How's the fishing stay out there? I'm assuming pretty good. Never caught a peacock bass. Uh, let's be honest there's like a million fish i haven't caught before but those peacock bass are badass uh center of the waves hit the bottom of the ob pier yeah that's nuts man short interval swell is insane here yeah I, i'd say that's what we have too right the timing we don't get long interval here is like 13 seconds you're like that's when you go out launch from the surf for sure <laughs> wind is crazy on the great lakes two words edmund fitzgerald man you guys are like great lakes pros here who knew the southern california they had the insight <laughs> yeah there you go benji What's a good lure for peacock bass in Florida? You asking me or the chat because I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing 20. I, I'd say probably probably stick baits. If you're gonna throw a slow pitch jig, probably like a 20 or 30. But I'm just talking out my ass. I've never caught a peacock bass in my life, so coach probably knows. That's funny. Pohukai, man, another one. Great Lakes can be nasty for ships, worse than the ocean. Oh, is that what you guys are both talking about? Interesting. Bigger is better. So you think bigger is better during the winter? Interesting. So you buck the um, finesse fishing argument. Let's see. Cortez Bank had some of the largest recorded waves of all time, just 100 miles off San Diego Bay. That's crazy. 10 pitch slow pitch jig will work for sure. Yeah, big baits equal big fish. Always? Or just sometimes? Because I don't I don't think that's always true. Because sometimes even the big ass fish and the big tuna, like out here, they're keyed in on those little those little bait fish. So I'm wondering, do you think that's a winter thing where like they eat the big fish during the winter or you, is it you think it's always so always big bait big fish interesting always always interesting i think big bait yeah that's a good bait because they, it weeds out the small right a lot of small fish won't eat the big bait but i i think big fish will eat a small bait too i, I don't know if it's like you i don't think you have to use a big bait to catch a big fish i think you can eliminate a lot of smaller fish fishing with the big bait what do you think about that? There's always a, a fish big enough to eat a big bait. Yeah, I agree. But like my biggest spotties, we're just talking spotted bay bass, have come off like small jigs, like smaller jigs, which is kind of interesting. And then, yeah, but I've caught Dorado and stuff too off just like those little 40 grams. It's, it's, it's an interesting conversation. Benji Moreno with the $10 super sticker. Thank you, Benji. I really appreciate it, dude. That means a lot. Thank you for supporting the channel. Oh, there we go. Even the elephants eat peanuts. I'm referring to small baits. 
let's bites for the right bite. Yeah, it's it's one of those things like, dude, it's like that debate can rage on freaking forever. <laughs> because, but I've seen both. I, I people do really well with the finesse fishing too. They, I I don't think there is a right answer. I'm just curious if like if you guys change your change up your whole style. So, anyways, back to the winter fishing. We've got pelagics are leaving. So, what do we got? We got La Jolla. Um, we got the bays, bay bass. Obviously, we can fish, and then we're gonna have this stuff opened up. Um, but one thing you guys should know is that there's a hack is the rockfish hack is going to Mexico. So when you go into Mexican waters, you guys know you live here in San Diego. It's not that far. You can be down there quick uh, just with a fishing license. And if you're offshore, um, you don't even need um, a passport or anything. If you're fishing close to the islands, you need some of that other stuff. But um, they don't have like... Um, a regulation or they, they don't shut down like the rock fishing and they have different regulations. So I think here we have what two hooks for rockfish. Um, you can use four hooks, I believe in Mexico, um, different depth, depth limits and stuff too. So if you ever want to fish rockfish during the winter, um, we just sail down the border a couple miles and boom, now you got a fishing hack that you can fish rockfish again. So that's something you guys got to think about too. Um, we're fortunate here, especially in the San Diego area where, legit what do we do go 15 miles south off of point loma and we're in we're in mexican waters fishing for different different regulations so um you're not tied to the rockfish there and you can get black sea bass and stuff too so there's different you just got to know your um bag limits and stuff like that bag limits and species are different but that's definitely a hack you guys can use too when the winter gets tough and, you, and you're angry you can't catch the rockfish here just go down south and start fishing Gila monsters eat goats. <laughs> Do they? Man, that's like that's beastly, man. <laughs> yeah, the rock pile, colonnade, etc. He's talking about the well, Arnie is the rock pile is known for like um the south of the Coronado Islands in Mexico. The rock pile is like just south of there, but yeah, that that's notorious for good rock fishing. But even the yellow tail go there too, so they stick around. That's good stuff. Smarter fish, bigger fish. Let's see here. Yeah, man. I think I covered it all as far as like the winter transition. So some of what you guys think. If you get any other hacks or anything, let me know. I'm curious what you guys are going to be fishing for. Um, I'll be out there definitely doing my same thing. Uh, last year, like it's, La Jolla was pretty much where I went and then until the rock fishing stopped. Then I transitioned to the bays, and we do lots of tournaments down here too. So, looking at the Bay Bass tournament, Spotty Bulls coming up. You got the Species Challenge. Pretty much all that good stuff, man. Those things are mean. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I'm going to have to look up Gila Monster eating a goat. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I think uh, maybe one of these shows, I'm going to have to do. Um, you guys know anybody that does anybody have electric reels or have experience with them? That's definitely something we're going to have to look into, especially as it changes. Cause I don't really know. I just probably have to go online and search like everybody, but I don't even know where to start the battery backup, all that stuff should be. Um, I definitely have to do something like that. Figure out what we're going to need for that. I'm curious who's going to be down too for, for that deep ass fishing. Calling that slow pitch drift would be sick. Heck yeah, man. I'm down for it. Not much fishing for me in the couple for a couple weeks. Nice taking a break. Even fishing Leonard. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks for me. I gotta get out there for sure. I think I went out, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks ago. It's good stuff. Yeah, I think that's all I got, guys. Thank you for tuning in. A little short of an hour, but it was good stuff. Like I said, we've got the CCA event at the end of, uh, not even the end, middle of December, December 10th. Bring an unwrapped toy and canned goods. If you guys missed the beginning of the show, I'm going to have a booth down there. Uh, CCA Doc Talk Podcast is going to be going on. Bring an unwrapped gift or 
uh, some canned goods. It goes to veterans families uh, for the holidays and Christmas for sure. There's going to be other people there. Chovy Art's going to be there, I think. Um, and Benji was saying, uh, I'll be there with the booth set up. And um, I think they're doing a podcast there as well. But So that'll be a good time. Mark that on your calendars, guys. December 10th. Uh, if you guys want to meet up, say what's up. I, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, December 10th, BNS Brewing. So we'll be there. Kevin will be there. Yeah, good time, guys. At least come by and say hi. So a little heads up on that. We only got a month. It's a month away. It's uh, November 10th right now. Um, so that's something to look forward to. And then, as always, please make sure – oh, here we go. Please make sure the canned goods are not out of date. Thank you so much. Yeah. Don't be grabbing some old-ass can of beans that's been on your shelf since 1983. Bring something good. At least some spam or something. Spam so good. You guys ever eat spam? You think Spotty would eat spam? I think a hundred percent chance Spotty would would eat spam. I have to do a video on that. Yeah, so check that out, guys. Uh, obviously, if you want your jigs, we got a big. Um, hopefully, in the next month or so, we're gonna have a nice uh, slow death jig announcement. We got some new products coming in. That I'm really excited about to share with you guys. Not gonna unveil it quite yet, but. But another month, maybe a month and a half on that. Um, I think it'll go in well with the winter fishing, everything that's going down. Spam's legit, man. If you guys want any jigs, or support the channel, submissionfishing.com, obviously. All the members here, thank you guys so much. Benji, thank you for the super chat. That's awesome. And um, yeah, guys, go check out the last shows for CCA uh, and the Rod Builders. Check out Simon with his Taipan rods. That was the last show. So if you guys are interested in rods, we pretty much got a show for everything. For all the newcomers out there, thank you for joining. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you on the next one next week. More fishing talk. Go get your black belts and fishing, guys. Oos.